So um, ever since I moved to Eugene about three years ago, every time it's almost a joke. Every time John Winnie's name comes up, people always say exactly the same thing. Oh, I love John Winnie's poems. <laughs> it's, it's it's like I think somebody um, I don't pre-recorded it in or something because it's always oh. I love his poems. So I think that that uh, thing that everybody says indicates something about how John's poems uh, touch people. Uh, he is, as you all probably know, the master of the uh, three-lined tercet, the, the three-lined uh, stanza. But also his poems, um, are, some of them are experimental and have really beautiful and interesting forms to them. There's also a tremendous amount of imagination in his poems. Uh, Stephen Blue, in his anthology that he did for the 150th year celebration of Eugene, had a poem that John had written called Death Hat. And it's, it's a poem about this man walking down the street. He just, he's died, and he has his death hat on. And there's so, such an imaginative leap in that idea of a death hat, and it's so true. You know, it just was, it was wonderful. Um, so, but what I like most about John's poems is that he's the master of concision. I mean, his poems are so concise. There's no fat in his poems, but at the same time, they're very lush and sensual. That's an interesting combination. So, I like that a lot about his work. This is what, uh, oh, John's books are, uh, he was the editor of the Collective Poems of Hazel Hall. His own books are Loving the Days, The Hurtling, and Second Nature's most recent book uh, was published by the University of Washington Press in 2008. This is what John wrote about his creative life. At a party once I was asked what my work was, and I answered that I was a poet. The questioner murmured, how unfortunate. <laughs> I grew up in a family where feelings were not expressed. It may be that for many of us, Poetry is the antidote to an unhappy childhood. I discovered that poetry was not a vocation at all, but more like a calling or a condition. I built a writing cabin, and I've gone to it every morning for over 40 years. I couldn't stop now if I wanted to. My greatest joy, the joy missing from my childhood, is in connecting with the reader or listener in the discharge of feeling across that synapse. John Witte. guess from that introduction, um, I, my intention is to, um, uh, I've gathered a, a group of poems that um, have a, a thematic cohesion around childhood. I've been thinking a lot about my vexed childhood, <laughs> trying to make sense of it. Um, so I want to begin with a, a poem from, I'll, I'll read by the way, just, um, just ten poems. Um, this is from uh, The Hurtling, and it's called Eat. Empty, aching, didn't we hunger, didn't we ask for more, heaping our plates, feeding the wolf in our stomachs, didn't she maneuver the polished aisles, piling our cart, the butcher, lifting his cleaver, the baker's hand, 
covered in flour? Didn't we eat and eat bent to our plates? Didn't he tell us children were starving in Africa? Didn't we dream of flying away over the singed and rutted fields? But not before we'd eaten everything, the orange and yellow mounds and thick slabs he gnashed like a man famished, sucking the small bones. I think he hungered in Polish, his first tongue, searching his mouth, filling his empty places with food. Didn't we dream the butcher moving his arms like a man playing the accordion? Wasn't his apron smudged? Didn't we run away? Didn't I fill my empty places with words? And then another um, this is from uh, Second Nature, which I just discovered to my astonishment. Um, University of Washington Press has brought out in soft cover. I never told you. <laughs> <laughs> I just learned. I just saw it. Scott has some copies. But if you buy the hard cover, the proceeds for, from this will go uh, directly to Scott. Uh, and so on. So another Another childhood um, memory poem called That. That's what I'm saying, how it felt to rise on the Ferris wheel, the world war over, the seat rocking, making a shrill chirping, I was alone or else my brother was there already in pain. That's what I mean about memory, climbing up through the salty air off the Atlantic, then sinking into the smell of popcorn a spattering of vomit on the platform, the mechanism gasping, the worm gear engaged, turning the wheel, lifting our little pew into the sky, or so we thought, dizzy in the breeze, smelling of wisteria and stars. That's what I mean about language. That's how the world was revealed to me in Elizabeth, New Jersey, at the age of eight, descending through the smoke of the barbecue pit, the charred meat weeping, then rising again into heaven. So, um, <clears throat> a portrait of um, the planet Saturn, which which um, draws in through its mythological. Um, namesake and so on, um, uh, this father figure, my father, you know, becomes kind of a dual portrait of the planet and him. Ringed, quarreled, weird, the unexplored planet of my childhood, what might have been mistaken for a sanctuary, was nothing but galactic debris, loafers and bicycles swept into your gravity. You may not even exist, except as a sluggish, golden cloud of gases and gravel. Oh, unknowable father, enormously orbiting in the dark, you devoured the others, but I, the youngest, escaped with my awful wound. Wind. This is about this, the experience we've all had, especially when you're a kid, putting your hand out the window and cupping the as the car draws them. Was that me, my hand cupped out the car window, catching the wind? Was that when I learned how nothing feels like something, a river surging, the memory of childhood spilling into and out of my hand, how something, a lifetime racing past the swelling of joy and grief, feels like nothing? And some newer poems in um, totally different form. Long lined couplets. Uh, this this uh, poem's called The Hem, and um, one of my very early experiences. Um, don't remember a lot about my childhood, but this, this was a vivid image. Um, of losing my mother, of losing track of my mother in the grocery store. <clears throat> the hem. She's frazzled your mother, she's had it with the holidays. 
the crowds and traffic, she's tired, who wouldn't be absent-minded in the long aisles of food? She loses you, absorbed by the packaging, the extravagant claims. She wanders the aisles. It isn't a question of love. You grasp the hem of a dress. An older woman, a stranger, a mother herself, together you go, looking for her. Where is she? Down which aisle, distracted by what colorful cardboard box or cellophane meat? Where is she? Far away, remembering her life before you. She had a life. She was young and facetious. Then everything changed. Her body changed. And there you were, holding the hem of her dress, the love of her life, making your way down the aisles of food. I hesitate to read this poem after Cecilia's astonishing uh, bee poem, honey poem. Um, but let's say it'll be, it'll be in its shadow and just kind of a, <laughs> I got a dim echo. Um, poem, this is a persona poem uh, in a voice about a very greedy uh, person, uh, aver avaricious poem. In fact, I thought of this being part of a sequence of. Um, Deadly Sins, um, uh, Avarice being one of the Deadly Sins. Um, and then I discovered that other of the Deadly Sins are just like sloth, which I think is great. <laughs> <laughs> we could all use more sloth, so, so much for that. This is called The Clover. If only I had more money, I'd be happy. I wouldn't be always thinking, okay, that would be nice, but where is the money coming from? I'd enter a store, I'd move the little angel of my cursor and click on this and also this, and why not? Is there a problem here? Does it appear in my dreams as excrement? Is there an absence inside? My father gone, my mother turned away, a child, my hand went down into my pants. I know, I know, people far away are starving. This isn't my problem, you see. It's all I think about, getting it, getting some more, loving the sweaty smell of it, like flesh, the smell of all the hands it's passed through, but now it's mine. I don't do eventually, I do now. I open my wallet and slide out my car, saying, here I am, world, receive me. I jumped the gun. This is, this is, that's about clothing. This is actually about honey and bees. And, um, <clears throat> uh, kind of an ecological, ecological warning uh, poem um, about uh, honeybee die-offs. You probably heard that about these. Um, very mysterious, probably caused by numerous factors, but, um, uh, um, in, in some places, catastrophic die-offs, they call them colony collapses, honeybees. Called a warning. The honeybees are vanishing from our lives, so what troubles us about this dwindling more than another? The snow leopard, for example, prowling the Himalayas, soundlessly on its huge paws, seems less terrible than this crazed behavior of bees, their incoherent dance flying away from the hive in every direction, dying alone and dispersed, unable to find their way back to the hexed cells, the hive glutted with honey. We've gathered and mashed the dead bees to a pace, testing for pathogens and pesticides. It bothers us, doesn't it? This silence instead of the fervent hum of summer the rotting away of the golden homes. Life began to end with the words, I don't feel so hot. But when I think of the red eye, 
to Florida, the plane wallowing in turbulence. My memory is not of you in a diaper, gonged on morphine, drifting up out of sleep, but a manatee approaching the window in the underwater viewing chamber, curious about us, transfixed behind the cloudy glass, your granddaughters gazing open-mouthed, having forgotten about you entirely. Or is this the way you now loom up in memory, whiskered, entranced in folklore, thought to have once been human? Another uh, animal poem. And a poem about uh, beauty and, and the meaning of beauty. Um, much and much um, contested concept um, that I, I appreciate that uh, artists uh, eschew, they, they avoid it all altogether. Most modern artists, they don't go there, they don't discuss it. Um, but it concerns me. So uh, this poem is called Low, as in Low and the Whole. Low. We come in time to know the meaning of beauty, a toad steps out of the woodpile, blotched, bunched, and warty, casting his watery eyes over the world. It isn't easy to change our way of thinking, is it? Finding beauty, even here, under a log, the plump toad stepping forth with the majestic solemnity of a prince who appears at twilight, his flute-like voice calling his mate, who darts his long, sticky tongue to snatch and gulp, a bug bloated, bow-legged, Club-footed, you want ugly? The creations of men are ugly, a travesty in the sense of an inferior or grotesque imitation of the world. It isn't easy to change our way of thinking, is it? Yet we come to know the meaning of beauty. We kneel on the earth for a better look and the Lord coming. more like for dead. The leaves tremble, the wind moves them, trembling, the wind agitates, it stirs the air, trembles in the leaves, it sways, the limbs moving them, moving them up and down, a breath, a deep breath, an exhalation, swaying, the limbs stirring, our thoughts made visible, stirring the air, it lifts us, yes, it lifts us, say what you like, it lifts our spirits, swaying, the limbs singing like harp strings, singing, no, not angels, singing the wind, lifting our limbs, thrashing, more like love, filling us, thrashing the wind, more like the gusts of love, swaying us, sweeping us off our feet, then falling, still, can it be, not moving, no, not moving, falling, silent, a sigh, beginning again, trembling in the leaves, the limbs. And finally, um, <clears throat> a, a, a poem, words uh, about <clears throat> the inadequacy of words, the inadequacy of poetry, um, called poetry. Not words again, the hydraulic crunching and creaking of words, just this pearly light on the waves, what else can we say? the dawn light gleaming on the waves, not this blunt fixation of words, not sublime or unforgettable, but fleeting, the light gleaming, as I said, the waves rolling toward us over the ocean. Can we be quiet now and watch? Can we go back and start again before words, the waves lifting and breaking, unspoken, their glory, their glory? Thank you. everybody for coming and don't forget uh, to uh, donate to Food for Lane County. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you, Kathy. Yes.